So in this video, we're going to look at how to do shorthand if statements, uh, which really, again, like the last video, uh, this is not something. This is not really a technique. This is a more of a way to write really clean, concise code when you're doing a lot of coding. And beginners are really not going to use this too much because it doesn't make too much sense. Uh, but for intermediate users and advanced users, um, they may already know about this. This is a really, really good technique. So. Shorthand if basically is is this. So if you have if uh, condition, right? This is a regular if, right? If condition that else that. Okay, that's a regular if condition. Okay, so this is something that you're all used to. Regular. Okay. There's another way to do this where you can say um, put in parentheses condition question mark um, var equals uh, you know test well, var equals one, at colon being else, uh, var equals two. Okay, this is this is a shorthand if. This is a shorthand if as well. Okay, so this is shorthand, shorthand one. Uh, it can actually get shorter than this, and I'll show you that in a second. But you can see already this is all in one line. And for me, so who's been using this for a while, it's easy to read. And eventually, once you keep using it, it will also be easy to read for you. But you're basically saying, if this, okay. If if this condition is true, do this. Else, do this. Okay. Now the shorter way, uh, which is what I'm going to show you in a second for an example, shorthand two, um, is basically this same thing. Okay. So we're just going to copy and paste it. Except we're going to set this var equals outside. So we're going to do that. Var equals one or two. Okay. Now it's even shorter. Now you see that var equals if this one that too because this really what's happening here this evaluates to to whatever we want so that'll evaluate into this that's why it works that way okay see in, in this manner we're evaluating in each step well here we're just we're figuring out what we want and then evaluating it in here okay so let's actually go ahead and do an example where might this be useful let's say well let's say that we've got a uh, a database output. Okay, I'm not actually going to do the database output, but let's say we do a MySQL query and we get an array. Okay, and we get a MySQL array out of it. Let's just say that, and it's some images. All right. So let's say let's say all of our images are in there just as their last name. So let's pull up a folder here, and let's say okay, here's our directory. that we have an images folder, and let's just say that we had just have these two images in here, graphic and logo. Okay, but in the database, they're literally just stored as logo.jpg and um, and graphic.jpg. Okay, we know nothing about that images directory. So in, in like online stores and whatnot, that directory can change, right? So you don't really want to store that directory in the database because that because that doesn't give you the ability then to change the directory. So in this case, our images directory is is images, and we're not storing that in the database with each element. We're just storing the name. Okay, called the base name. And then let's say that we also have hosted images in the same database as these. Okay, so let's so basically you can copy a couple of these. So we can say uh, copy image URL. So now we've got some HTTP um, images as well. And I got another one right here. I'll just uh, copy that so I don't bore you. Okay, probably would have been quicker just to copy from Google. Anyway, okay, so there we go. So we've got two local images that require the images directory and two that that don't want the images directory we we don't want it there because you're we, those are hosted images okay so basically we're going to loop through and display all the images so that's going to be easy for each uh, array as and you know what let's make this images for each images as image okay for each image as image what we basically want to do is we want to echo out uh, image source equals Okay, and in that we want a new variable called image source. That's kind of what we want, right? So pretty simple, but so let's form this image source. So we need a condition, right? We need to see if we're HTTP or if we're not HTTP. So we're basically going to check first. Our condition is going to be if substring uh, of image from 0 to 4, which is HTTP, if it, it matches. So that matches HTTP. Okay, so not S, HTTP. So Basically, we're taking the first four letters of this. So, for first four would be logo. So that's not HTTP. First four is graph, not HTTP. And then this is HTTP. So basically, if it's HTTP, okay, if we get HTTP, um, we want to set image source equal to 
the image. We're done. We're done here. That's that's really all we want to do with that. That's that's perfect. Okay. So so else so if it's not HTTP, basically if it's a local image, then we're going to say image source equals. Uh, so our image is dir. So I, I'm hard coding this in there, but your image is dir would be in some constants file and some configuration and whatnot. Okay. So images slash and then image. Okay. So that's kind of how you would do that. So that's basically our code. So again, we're going to use our shorthand if in a second, but if we take a look at that, um, there's all four images, okay, which is great. Um, but let's go ahead and shorten that down to our very, into our small version. Okay? So I'll leave that there so you can see it as I do this. Basically, we're going to say image source equals in parentheses something question mark colon. That's our syntax. So in parentheses, we're going to have that substring um, image comma zero comma four Okay, so that's that's that condition. Well, that equals HTTP, right? So this is our if condition. Okay, so so wrapping the if condition in parentheses. See that this wrapped in parentheses. That that parenthesis matches this parenthesis. Okay, so this is our condition. So if our condition is true, then image is going to be stored into image source. If it's not true, this colon, then we're going to store this right here okay so we can now delete all of this and now we're down to just two small lines of code to do this task so image source equals substring 0 to 4 if it's HTTP then go ahead and just use image if not go ahead and use the images as you will so save and then refresh and we should get the same result which we do. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Okay? So there you go. This is a really nice way to write an if if else condition uh, that stores a variable in a very clear, concise manner that can really cut down the number of the amount of code you write and can really make things a lot more readable as well.